Welcome back to Retro Handhelds BRB Gaming. With us today again is the YouTuber retro emulation extraordinaire, Russ Crandall from Retro Game Corps. Welcome, Russ. Hey, th thanks for uh, having me on again. I I, uh, I really enjoyed the first time around, so hopefully we can top it this time. I think we will. Yeah. I think we got some good stuff to talk about today. There's, there's a lot of hype going on in the retro handhelds community in general right now. A lot of yeah. a lot of really good upcoming stuff. Yeah, it's been a busy like month. <laughs> it's been kind of crazy, and I'll have to warn you guys. I uh, a little down in the dumps today. Got my second Pfizer shot yesterday, so oh. it hit me hard this evening. <laughs> I'm just hanging on to dear life to be here well, right you, now. Yeah, you need to snuggle in with your 351V and play some Act Razor. Then get your crap mm, together. You know what? No man, no, no. RGB 10 Max, come on. RGB oh, 10 Max. Today. Well, yeah. there it is. Funny you say that because I had something come in the mail today. What? <laughs> Wait. Oh no! Yeah. Wait a My minute. Jealousy. <laughs> yeah. Russ, are you saying we were samesies? We got our yeah. RGB 10 Maxes on the same day. Oh, you got yours today? Today? Yeah. Like, oh man! Three hours yeah. ago. Yeah. Yeah. I actually have already filmed my like impressions and then I'm going to try to push through the night and do the, you know, editing and recording of the vocals and stuff and maybe get it out tomorrow morning. So, cool. Yeah. I was just looking for a video on your channel today. I'm like, I got to see Russ's impression on this and there wasn't <laughs> one yet. And I was like, I bet he has one in the pike though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I, this thing has been the journey beyond journey. So I initially, you know, I work with BitBoy and they were going to send it to me. And, you know, just so I could link to them or whatever, you know, this is a free review unit. And they just have gotten slower and slower. And so this time around, they said, oh, yeah, we'll send it to you. You'll be one of the first and stuff. It's been over a month, you know, and and, and they said, I, I waited a few weeks and I was like, hey, it's not showing up. What's going on with that? And they're like, oh, it must be lost in the mail. But then that day I saw a label has been created, you know, and so they just <laughs> forgot about me for a few weeks. And so. Yeah. Uh, so I actually ended up buying two others at that point because I'm like, I'm going to see if other companies can get them to me faster because I just need one, you know. Right. And right. Uh, so th the BitBoy one actually came first. And so now I have two more <laughs> coming in the mail. Uh, <laughs> but it's all good. So. Well, how are you feeling about it? What are, you, what are your first impressions? Well, Stubbs, let me ask you, did your screen fall out in the first five seconds of holding it? <laughs> no, oh, it did no. not. Oh, it's not. Do I need to push on it? No, so it's it got a pull on it basically on mine on one end the adhesive was just loose and so I I knew that there had been screen issues and so I just took my fingernail and just pop it just a little bit and it came right out and so I think the adhesive um, they use is not strong enough. Actually, my screen on the right hand side is coming up. I yeah. did not notice this. I'm pushing yeah. down now and it's going in. Yeah. So I uh, I ended up buying new adhesive. Uh, and I'll, I'll do a video basically telling people how to repair theirs if they have that issue. I've heard that several people have this issue, but yeah, I guess it didn't fall out, but I, I could definitely have pulled it out. You know, I'm one of those people. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> I just know. <laughs> oh man. It's been, a, it's been a whole journey with this device though. Thor and I, you know, we're, we're working on 351 droid and we're like, we got to see how yeah. this works on the RGB 10 max. Cause this could be the device. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so that's one of the first things I did was, you know, because the Lineage OS for the Odroid Go Super works on this. And so I had already built my image in anticipation of just being able to pop it in the RGB 10 Max. And sure yeah. enough, it worked. Uh, the built-in Wi-Fi did not work at all. And so, but the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi dongle with a USB-C adapter, my, my Retroid one actually, it, it works. Like, and so I can get 5 gigahertz really? speeds on it. I have to have like the kind of, you know, the dongle city thing going, you know, in terms of like the, the one and then the other. Um, wow. But other than that, yeah, five gigahertz. And I was streaming, uh, I was doing GameCube streaming. I was going to set up um, Saitaki or whatever the um, the PS4 uh, stream thing that you can use, basically, so I can stream my yeah. PS4. I was going to do that, but I, I'm just having issues setting it all up since I wiped my PC uh, last week because I got hacked. And so, uh, yeah, so it's just been, I'm having to start from scratch. I didn't have time, but in general, yeah, the lineage OS worked just fine, just perfectly. So dude, I was so happy to see that your channel came back. No guff, no oh. musk, nothing. Yeah. That Thanks. was, that was rough. Phew. That was, yeah, that was so weird. You know, I would just wake up at five in the morning, you know, and I was actually on uh, vacation or on leave that week. And so it was a Friday morning. And I went to bed late, probably one in the morning, um, Thursday. And then I guess the hack happened in my time about two in the morning. Uh, but my PC was off and everything, which was kind of crazy. And so then, um, yeah, I woke up at five and just to all these emails and stuff. And 
Wow, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I was one of them. <laughs> yeah. I thought about it afterward. I was like, oh, man, dude, I'm so sorry about what happened to your channel. Is everything okay? I was like, yeah. oh, shit, he's probably still, like, dead asleep right now. Yeah. I know, Thor, good. you were you were saying you saw it in real time. Yeah, I, I watched him take the channel down. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I kind of wish I had seen that, but it's all good. It's uh, I'm so sorry that happened. And I'm also sorry. I have to issue an apology, by the way, dear <laughs> listeners, to Russ. <laughs> On behalf of Thor and I, because last on last week's episode, we were giving him a hard time. We didn't mention him by name. We were like, this YouTuber, this scoundrel was like, the <laughs> RGB 10 Max is 5 gigahertz. Uh, and it's and he's like, <laughs> it's impossible. It's it's impossible. And, and he just, he lied to us. He lied to our faces. Um, <laughs> I don't think we were that hardcore about it. Damn. And I was like, never talking to him again. Yeah. Never, and never. In a show of, of good faith, you know, this week we're like, hey, let's come on. Let's <laughs> Clear the air. The apology episode. This is, this is our apology episode. But no, um, I'm I'm glad to hear that you can use through a Wi-Fi dongle. You can use five gigahertz. That, yeah, it's pretty awesome. That's a game changer. Yeah, it seems really silly, but adding USB functionality for like Wi-Fi chips and stuff like that to Android is a pain. All right, mm. it is a pain in the butt because every time you add a new driver into the kernel, you have to completely rebuild everything from scratch. Oh wow. It's wow. a huge pain. It's a security thing. I get yeah. it. So just just hearing that five gigahertz with your little USB dongle, I assume it's yep. just one of those tiny chips. Yeah, it's the um, TP Link like AC six hundred. It's like okay. the ten dollar one you get on Amazon, the most popular yeah. one. Yeah. Uh hearing that that works out of the box with no times image already. Mm-hmm. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, the same works on the Odrigo Super, and that's what got me thinking. I'm like, I bet you this is gonna work. You know. Good. Good, good. Let's see here. <laughs> Skip the whole box. We've all got the whole box. Here's yeah, my box point. of trinkets. Yeah. You see, that's funny. I use a tackle box, is what I got. So. I have a TP link. Yeah. Uh, AC600. That's it. That's the one you need. Yeah. That's the one. And I got that's my Retroid to Amazon USB-C. for me. <laughs> we are literally same Z's now. <laughs> oh my God. Game changer. We can do Stadia. We yeah. can do Xbox, <laughs> XCloud. Uh, Game Pass, XCloud. Yeah. PS I now, wasn't right? getting great speeds, um, but you know, Hawaii is really bad. We have like bad ping, you know, in general and stuff. Like everything's yeah. really bad for connection for us. Like Stadia is actually not offered in Hawaii. It's offered in every other state in the union, but Hawaii. And really? So, v- yeah, because of our VPN? connections. Even Alaska? No, not even without without a VPN. I think Alaska was off the list, but then was added on, and wow. then Hawaii was not. Yeah, you know. lame. It's all good. <laughs> Super lame. You just you get used to it. So. Yeah, but. You have beautiful beaches and amazing weather yeah. and really good food. Yeah, that's true. And I'm over here waiting on Starlink like a chump because I live <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I want Starlink for my RV, man. I want to yeah. go take it on the road. That'd be yeah. awesome. Oh, my. So RGB 10 Max looking all right, except for that screen problem. Otherwise, yeah, looking all right. I think, you know, I, honestly, only complaint I had other than and I don't know if the black model is the same, but the orange model has a rubberiness to it, the plastic. And I think that in a year it's not going to feel very good. You know, I think mm. it's going to get kind of gross. Um, mm. Especially me living in Hawaii. I've got really high humidity. We don't have AC in our house, you know. And so I think it's just going to, you know, if you saw in my earlier videos, I have the RG350 and stuff, the ones with the rubber pads on the back. And the glue started like just like coming out of those after about six months of use, you know, oh, because of the humidity in my house. And so yeah. I expect that this RGB 10 Max is going to have issues in about a year. How does that feel compared to the uh, the Black 351V? Yeah, so they're very different. The Black 351V, I have I have actually all three of them. I'm gonna, I'm doing a deep dive review of the 351V right now. I was going to publish it tomorrow, but because I got the RGB 10 Max, it's kind of pushed my agenda a bit. But um, the R, the 351V Black version, the, the Shadow or whatever they call that one, Smoke. Uh, has more texture to the plastic than the other two models do. Yeah, and and so it's a little bit more, but um, not quite at all like the rubberiness feel of the RGB 10 Max. You know, that one is unique. I've never felt one that feels like that at all. Uh, the other one, the 351V Smoke, is like got a grittiness to it. You know, it's yeah. a different kind of right. texture. Um, it definitely does. Yeah. Ambernick sent me the a wood grain and a black for our, our developer units, right? Yeah. Uh, and I noticed immediately that the black 
even though it, that the texture was really nice, but it didn't feel to me at least as solid as the wood grain one. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. Didn't feel as structural, I guess. Yeah. I never uh, would have guessed it in a million years, but I'm the wood one is the one I'm keeping. You know, really? Yeah. Both me of too. You. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's not too. real. It's not real wood. It's, it's, it's so not, weird, it's, though. It's it so weird to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's plastic. It's such an odd choice to make. Dude, yeah. I got a wood grain keyboard like ten years ago that I thought was wood grain, <laughs> and it was plastic. And I assume it's the same kind of feel, really smooth texture. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "This keyboard just makes me angry. I, <laughs> I have to leave the house and take a minute. Like, I yeah. would expect it to be. Wood, you could take a wood. walk. <laughs> take a walk. Do the Charlie Brown music. All right. <laughs> I want an actual wood grain. Yeah. Or I need you to build me a wood case. I, I'll build wrist, you a wood right? anything. <laughs> I'll break the CNC out. We got it. I'll take care All of it. Right. So the only thing that I, my minor complaint about the wood is that it does affect my viewing experience. Like all the brown around the screen. You know mm. what I mean? It does change yeah. the coloring for me when I'm looking at the screen. Very, very minor, but it's something that once I picked up on it, I was like, oh, crap. I think that's yeah. something that a lot of people don't pick up with, uh, especially with main brand consoles as well. Like the Switch and the Vita and all of these other ones, with, especially with the, the 2DS XL and the 3DS XL with all the, the exterior colors, that mm-hmm. changes how you feel about the screen, 100%. Yep. I was watching your, your video on the Vita um, with the, the difference between the 1000 and the 2000 model, the OLED mm-hmm. versus the other. Yeah. And when you actually zoomed in with your like, semi-macro lens and we're yeah. showing off the contrast differences, holy crap, that makes such a big deal. That's, yeah. a, that's such a big difference. Right. My goodness. Yep. Absolutely. And what you're talking about with the, the light wood grain, Mm-hmm. Around this thing, I can absolutely see how that would change your gaming experience 100%, especially with older, uh, more washed out stuff like Super Nintendo, 16 yep. bit, eight, you know, that kind of stuff as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So, but, but at the same time, the wood is the wood's the one that I'm going to keep, you know, it's just got <laughs> so much, so much character to it, you know. Yeah. Uh, let me, let me, let me just chime in here. <laughs> You're having a let hard time character. swallowing this I'm, pill here. I see. <laughs> I, dude, Russ, I am like, I this is fun to me. Okay, uh, this is this is a okay. fantastic yeah. retroid pocket. Look at the fun colors. Look yeah. at these buttons. There's Those so many neat. colors. Yeah. Um, it feels good. And I know you're not the biggest retroid fan <laughs> since getting your RG three fifty one series. Yeah, and they need to do L three R three on here. But something calls me back to this device all the time. I don't know what it is. It's inferior. I think it's a form factor. Yeah, it's just easy. Honestly, you know, side to side form factor. So you do you guys did you guys use like the very early models? Like I've heard that the buttons that are on the model I have, I have the the second shipment basically. Um, mm-hmm. So I got mine in August, I think. Uh, like I've heard the buttons on mine are worse than they are nowadays, and that's my, my biggest issue. Is I hate the lack of travel and the clickiness of the yeah. face buttons. That's like my biggest problem. So I have the I mine's the launch one. I changed okay. the button colors out. Mine's yeah. the launch RP two. And everything has stayed extremely clicky. Mm. Uh, I didn't do any of the like shimming or anything like that with any of the joysticks that was yeah. recommended. Everything finally smoothed out eventually. Mm. But I did mm. later on get a couple of different models, one for my daughter uh, and then one for me as not not a dev unit, something to actually play games on. Yeah, uh, And right. I did notice some build quality differences between the actual quality of the buttons for the plastic itself. It seemed like that changed. Uh, yep. And then you're talking about the travel. I noticed that on the D pad specifically. It, it right. Same much, with D pad. Yep. It seemed much shorter on yeah. the later models. And I don't huh. know what that's about, huh. other than maybe them using a different company for it. I don't right. know. And I hope the Retroid Pocket 3 isn't vaporware. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, we, we've got the TRDR Pocket or whatever. All right. Have you seen that, Russ? <laughs> no. I- I haven't seen the that Soldier one. Boy. Soldier Boy. Oh, yeah. Which is basically <laughs> just the Retro Pocket 1, right? That well, one? it's the shell, but that they claim that they've changed like a whole bunch of stuff inside of it. Oh, really? Huh. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Taki actually pointed out on on his Discord that they have the uh, you know the toolbox app that they have on the Retroid Pocket too. Yep. It's it's on the TRDR Pocket. So my wow. thought is that more chip or Retroid actually made the damn thing. Yeah. <laughs> and they're keeping quiet about it, and that they're gonna. Like they did with the RP1 and the RP2, they're going to use that same new hardware setup for the RP3 from the TRDR wow. Pocket. That's yeah. my opinion, but huh. they have a pattern of doing that. 
yeah, I have really haven't followed much on the retro pocket three, like speculation at all. Um, mm. so it'd be interesting. You know, I like to be surprised about some stuff. So yeah. Yeah. It it's, I'm not super stoked on it. I'll be honest. Um, <laughs> after, well, after seeing the soldier boy TRDR debacle, sure. It has a helio P 60, like it's a fast chip. Mm-hmm. Um, but the one ninety nine handheld, that's probably where the money is. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I I'm very excited for this. That is starting to feel like vaporware to me. All right. This has been going on for six months at least now. Yeah. It's yeah. been being talked about. You know, the thing is, and I, I'm probably talking to the right guys about this, but I, uh, I've never gotten into, I like literally the retro pocket two was a first Android device I ever used like mm-hmm. at all, you know, full stop. And so I'm really learning as I'm going. Right. But somebody uh, had two GPD XD pluses and they, they sent me one as like a tester or whatever. And so I got that a few days ago yeah. and I was like, okay, this is it. This is the Android experience I'm waiting for where it's a powerful chipset and a touch screen and it's a, got a, a gaming device. Right. And yep. I don't really like it. <laughs> 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 I don't know what, what wonders I thought was going to come. Yeah. That right there. Right. There you go. And so is it, it's is my, it because it's clam shell? Is that what it is? There's there's lots of things to it, right? One is that I need to I need to learn and build a front end that works for me. You know what I mean? I haven't done anything. I've I've got the I paid the ten dollars for the Arc browser or whatever it's called. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I kind of set it up a little bit and I was like, this isn't gonna work. And I never got into <laughs> dig. I you know, I've never tried any other ones, you know. And mm-hmm. so maybe that's part of it. I just I'm just happy enough just doing like the ATV launcher, like just making little yeah. uh, pills, like kind of icons for each app and then just running it that way. But I know there's a better way to do it. You're definitely talking to the right guys about that because we're in the background working on something called, we're calling Aesir, right? Uh, Aesir OS and then the Mjolnir front end, uh, which is essentially going to be a launcher with RetroArch built into it. Yeah, that's uh, so awesome. With the ability to launch apps. So that mm-hmm. I feel that, I personally feel like that's what's holding Android back as yeah, being a, a serious contender for yeah. these emulation handhelds, besides yeah. how much of a pain in the butt it is to port to new devices. Right. Uh, so we're working on that. That's in the, that's in the works. Yeah, I'm it's, excited. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, some people like Android because they want to tinker, and they mm-hmm. just want to have that tinkering experience. But we're like, Android, you can get a little bit better performance out of, so let's make it like 351 elect, make it easy. Yeah. See, I don't exactly. even think it's a little bit better. I, I think the software support for the emulators for Android is way beyond the support for Linux as it is right now. Um, we're looking at with 351 Droid right now, uh, 20 or 30% increases on PSP and N64 alone between yeah. Android and, and Linux. Yeah. Like really solid distros, you know, Arc OS and 351 and LAC and stuff. We mm-hmm. loaded up no times, uh, no times ROM and we're like, Holy crap! People are playing uh, God of War: Chains of Olympus on an RK thirty three twenty six device, and that's crazy. That's crazy yeah. to get that kind of performance. And it was holding pretty steady at like thirty frames. So, oh. and Emulac, I could not get PSP any PSP game to work very well. Right? I'm like, I bet Lineage could do this better. Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, it's definitely untapped territory. You know, we've um, kind of been waiting for it. And I remember Taki talked about it a little bit when he was. I forget which device he was reviewing, but he was like, you know, everybody needs to get on the Android thing with this chipset, you know? Yeah. And, uh, yep. And I guess he was right. <laughs> well, I, I try not to be a, a, a salty jerk about it, but every now and then I see someone pop but up. Thor, you're like, kind of a salty jerk about I it. I am. I am. Let's be honest. <laughs> somebody, somebody will pop up and be like, Oh my God, I can't speed run super Mario brothers three on an Android device because of, of control delay. I'm like, dude, why are, what are you talking about? Why are you talking about this? Why are you trying to speed run Mario, Super Mario Brothers 3 on a Retroid Pocket 2? Like, are you just doing it to do it? Are you trying to, to stream it on Twitch or something? Like, what, right. what's your end game here? Are you trying to make money off this? Because you seem really butthurt about something that nobody else cares about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one thing. You know, I, yeah. I definitely had issues with the Retroid Pocket 2 user interface, like when I'm navigating games and stuff. But gameplay, yeah. everyone always says, well, what about input lag during gameplay? I'm like, Never noticed it, you know. Like maybe I'm not sensitive enough, but yeah. well, <laughs> that is always the thing. I'm really sensitive to this. That's always right. the post. I'm really sensitive to input lag. Right. Yeah. I believe you, but nobody else is. 
<laughs> so I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. I faked myself into noticing input lag after noticing that comment. I was like, it's like, is there input? I think there is input lag. Oh, look so I started that. messing around with like uh, a run ahead features and like mm-hmm. frame messing with the frames yep. and all that. And I think that helped. <laughs> I can't tell. I don't no. notice. I'm like, did, did I make it better or did I make it worse? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> What's funny is that like, the tides turned on me just last week because I reviewed the the game, sir. Like it's like a telescopic thing you use on your phone, yeah. a little controller, a sandwich thing. And there's a Bluetooth version that just came out. And so I reviewed that and I swear there's a ton of input lag when I'm using it on my iPhone and even on my Android phone. And so that was the basis of my review was, hey, this has got a lot of input lag. So use yeah. the USB-C one instead, right? Yeah. And it's right. I got so many comments of people being like, I have the Bluetooth one. It's great. And I'm like, wait, I just turned into that guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm the one now saying, oh, there's input lag. <laughs> I know. Well, it's the same thing with the Kishi, man. Like yeah. the Kishi direct, direct plugs in. So it's just fast. It is fast. Can somebody explain to me, I get a, a lot of DMs about people being like, what Bluetooth controller should I use for these retro handhelds? Easy. Eight but do zeros. <laughs> They're so cute. They're totes adorbs. So Your children can use them and... Uh, but like I, I understand getting like an SN30 Pro or something like that for general gaming, like on your PC and stuff. I don't quite yeah. understand the Bluetooth controller with a three-inch screen device right. thing. You yeah, know? yeah. I used to get questions like that all the time, like, "Hey, how do I get Bluetooth working on my RG351P or whatever?" Right? And yeah. I, and I couldn't figure it out, so I went back to the guys, you know, behind Arco SN351 Elect. I'm like, "Hey guys, how do you guys have controller support?" And they said, "Why?" <laughs> like you don't need controller support. Why would we're you do not that? we're not gonna ever do controller support? And I was like, Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Who's gonna huddle around <laughs> a three and a half inch screen? So, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's true. I've never thought to plug controllers into these devices. Yeah. No. The only thing I've done is with like GPD XD plus mm-hmm. when I took it camping and a friend was like, Hey, we should play Tony Hawk. And I was like, I got just the thing. <laughs> yeah, because it has know. HDMI out though, right? Yeah, and so right. That, plug that, in a projector. That, and... that makes sense, right? You can do a mini console, right? But the 351P does not have video out. You know, so, there's no option there. Yeah, and then having to peer over someone's shoulder to play two player, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> a little 3.5 inch screen. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna. It has to be your significant other because you're gonna be that close, right? right? right. And then you're just gonna get in a fight. You know, if you're like playing Contra or something, you <laughs> kill the other person. And it's, yeah, it's not worth it. It's not. It's not. And that's why I got these 8-bit-2 controllers, which I have yet to use, by the way. But they're just so darn cute um, that I can't return them. I don't know yeah. why. <laughs> I, I, I've like, I'm never going to use these, but I, I, I can't give them away. But they're adorable. And I don't want the kids to touch them because they'll make them goobery. They're just beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Well, what, what do we have on the horizon? I've been hearing about the RG552. Is that it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, there's like there's no info. Like but there's it, no I, info at all. People right? love to talk about it, but it has, uh, and I forgot the aspect ratio. I think it's a five by three or something like that. It's a weird mm-hmm. aspect ratio. Um, that's all they've uh, all they've said is you know a good aspect ratio, and it's going to play PSP smooth, right? But then the video that he uploaded, which was just the screen it's connected screen. to something off camera, yeah. right, was <laughs> not smooth. Like there was full on frame skip going on, right? And I'm like. Let's not get our hopes up right now. Let's just wait and see what happens. So Yeah. And in the end, I don't know that it, the performance matters as much as the build quality of these Ambernic products. Like just the, I just like feeling the 351M. It just it's a good feeling device. And I know it doesn't play everything I want it to, but it's like, yeah, I'm I'm good with PS1 games. Like that's the thing, you know, there's such a threshold, right, between playing PS1 and below, right, in a good way, which you can do for under 100 bucks, no problem, right? Right. Or you spend four hundred dollars to be able to play PSP and maybe a tiny bit of GameCube or whatever. Right. That's not a three hundred dollar like thing to me. It's not worth it. So that's why no. I stick to the cheaper stuff. So. Well, I I think that's why people are so whacked out about the one ninety nine, whatever right. they end up calling it. Yeah, because uh, you're under two hundred bucks for uh, definitely PSP, Dreamcast, but also GameCube mm-hmm. and potentially some PS two as well. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's really interesting, and uh, I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, we'll we'll see. You know, I, I know that the 199 itself is really just the like early bird pricing. You know, so yeah. it's going to creep up, but uh, it'll be interesting. Well, this, Taki, I think, said uh, it was only going to be like a twenty dollar increase or something like that oh, per really? unit, which I expected fifty bucks, maybe a yeah. hundred, right. depending. Uh, and that the pro version that supposedly has more RAM, uh, 
is going to be only fifty dollars more. Wow! So it'll be two forty nine, and then it'll be two sixty nine after the the Indiegogo campaign. Yeah. I don't know. Still reasonable. Yeah, extremely reasonable. Sub sub three hundred dollars. I mean, new three DSs and new two DS XLs like the uh, Hylia Shield version of the Pokemon version go for mm-hmm. three or four hundred dollars on eBay. No problem. You know. Yeah. For for yeah. a two DS. <laughs> what? That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's one thing too. Yeah. I've noticed. Like I I have been in the background. You know, I, I talk a little bit about Android. I did one video about Android phones in particular as a retro gaming device, like a dedicated device. I've been in the background, like buying different phones, testing them and trying to find that kind of middle ground. Because honestly, the first video I did was not half baked, but it was I was purposefully going into it blind, right? To see, Mm -hmm. okay, people always talk about this. What is the experience like? Right. Now I'm trying to go in a little bit more informed. And so just yesterday I bought a um, Google Pixel 3, right? Mm -hmm. Which is, I think it's like a six inch screen, maybe. Uh, Unfortunately, it's not 16 by nine. It's like one of the wider ones. Um, cause I think 16 point 16 by nine is the sweet spot for phones, but they really don't make them anymore. Um, but 110 bucks is what I ended up paying on eBay for one at, at excellent quality. Basically yeah. that was an $800 phone two and a half years ago. You know what I mean? Right. So I, that's, I had one. It was. Yeah. And so that's like the advantage that I think, cause the, the 199 device a year from now, two years from now will still be a 199 device. Right. Whereas right, phones, right. there's so much churn and there's so much new hotness going on that all the other stuff leaving behind on the wayside becomes a ripe opportunity for us to say, okay, let's transform this for that same price to get even more power potentially. Right. So, it's true. Yeah. I felt really good about uh, picking up a Pixel 4 XL for 300 bucks on eBay. Wow. Uh, as my personal use, and it was brand new, by the way, unlocked. Um, Amazing. But I felt really good about that because it has the, the Snapdragon 855 chip in it Mm -hmm. uh, and that can do basically everything i would expect or want anything to do right now (laughs) yeah (laughs) absolutely uh and then i I slap on a kishi when i want to play games on it and that's kind of my my daily driver for playing super nintendo games on a wildly overpowered phone so (laughs) (laughs) that's so funny yeah we definitely needed an 855 to get good super nintendo so oh yeah (laughs) well 144 frames per second let's go (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Going back to that whole speed running thing, if you have retro achievements turned on and you're into that, you know, I've been known to be into <laughs> getting achievements. Um, at that point, yeah, if I'm playing Super Nintendo, I want to have the run ahead just in case that affects performance because getting some of those, getting the timing right on some of those older games is yeah. so tough. Yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> so I'm I'm so far, like so many rungs below that when it comes to actually playing games. To me, Mario World comes up on any screen and I'm like, this is sorcery. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just the fact that it's happening, right? And like input lag and like bleeding, whatever. Like, I don't even care about any of this stuff. I'm like, I always wanted to play this game when I was 12. Now I can. That's magic enough, you know? Yeah. So <laughs> that is, you're like, oh, I'm eight years old again. Here we go. Right. Yeah. I have a really bad habit of getting Wind Waker running on something and then not playing it. Uh, oh yeah. yeah <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Just just the tweaking and sitting there that's the fun for me. That's that's yeah. the enjoyment. Not the actual playing of the game. Right. But, but you get it to that point, to- you're like, yeah, now I'm ready to play <laughs> this game. Let's see what else I can do. <laughs> nah. Yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh, we'll F Zero <laughs> run on this too. Let's find out. Oh, so Super Mario Sunshine, let's find out. Yeah. And then it just like gets I- lost. Yeah, I have I've never played Mario 64 other than getting like the first star, right? And <laughs> <laughs> I've got it running on the Odrego Super and now the RGB 10 Max at 60 frames per second. And it's the most beautiful version of this game that's ever been created on a handheld. And then I turn it right off and move on to something else. Every <laughs> right. time. You're like, this is like majesty. I just appreciate every little bit of this regal experience. Yeah. It is. No, I got to go eat some cheese. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With the know. Android development, because we're constantly testing stuff, we're constantly making configuration changes and all that kind of stuff. I feel like I haven't played a classic game. In, since October, you know, mm. yeah, <laughs> because yep. we're just constantly loading up new ROMs, testing this, testing that, and then if I get an ac- actually like ten minutes to sit down, I'm playing. You know, right now I'm playing Mass Effect. You know, because okay. that, that came right. Out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> what is are you exactly. Do? Yeah, that is exactly why I want to get PS4 streaming working on the RGB ten. <laughs> I'm going to play Mass Effect on it. That's yeah, what I do. yeah, that's yeah. great. It's a good call. That'll be fun. Because in our in our first world problems, whatever we can play on console <laughs> and sitting on our couch, we need to be able to replicate playing it in bed. We have right. to. Yeah. Yeah. Or toilet. Yep. 
or toilet. <laughs> or the to- <laughs> There's no other choice. Right. Or even better, a corporate a corporate toilet. Right. Yeah, that's even better. Yeah. So you know. <laughs> so pivoting a bit, what uh, what's going on in life this week for you guys? What's what's new? Dad life. Mm. Well, my my kid, my oldest uh, sixth grader, he finishes school this week. So he's going to be back nice. to school. Um, it'll be good, but uh, it's funny because he's timed it to all of his bad behaviors coming out now. And so he's at a perfect time. <laughs> right. Summer starting. <laughs> Minecraft, do whatever you want to do. And I had to take it all away because he uh, wasn't doing his homework and then saying he was, and you know, things like that. And so yeah. I had to pull the plug and take the cord away from him, oh, you know, and no. <laughs> hit it. I never thought I'd be that parent that's like, hey, I'm going to hide the, you know, I've always heard about, oh, yeah, hit his Xbox like plug, right? right? That's the way to get him or whatever sure enough yesterday i had to take his computer plug away no well i i had to take my darling daughter's tablet away and so she's homeschooled she uses khan academy and a few other things uh, mm-hmm. on the tablet but uh she's been she's eight going on 17 and <laughs> has decided to be a little mouthy be a little snarky here and there so she's been getting sent to her room a lot and i was always that kid that had like five game boards so mm-hmm. keeping a video game out of my hands was impossible. All right. <laughs> yeah. My mom would take one. She'd take maybe two. I'd always <laughs> have a backup. I always have a spare and I could hear right. her coming down the hall. So I'd swap in Tetris or some bullshit like that. So I could pick up my Pokemon game as soon as she was finished taking it away from me. My daughter now has the tablet and because it's so slim, it can, it can hide in every <laughs> crevice. So I, I feel like a drill sergeant tossing her bed. Every other day, where is it? Where's the tablet? Shitty, Where is you know, because yeah. I can't yeah. find the tablet, and yeah. I know it's in her room. You know? Yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, you know, so going back to the to the tearing out the bed and all that kind of stuff. So in, I, I don't know if I've mentioned it publicly, but I, I am in the U.S. Navy. I've been in for 21 years, and so I went to boot camp 21 years ago. And the the drill instructors, we call them uh, RDCs in, in, in the Navy, but. Uh, they do that, right? They tear out yeah. your your stuff and they call it, and it's always funny, everything's called Ricky something. Like Ricky is like a short word for recruit, right? And so they call them Ricky Hurricanes. And so you come in from like lunch <laughs> or whatever and a Ricky Hurricanes happened and they've just turned over everything and you got it because they're, they're teaching you to organize again quickly, you know, basically. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah, so you're basically doing a Ricky Hurricane on your daughter every day. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So that, that's Absolutely. amazing, man. And for one, thank you for your service. Oh, yeah. No worries. Um, for two, is that where you got the name Retro Game Corps from? Is that like tie in at all to your Navy life? Yeah, you know, because the Marines are part of the Navy, you know, the Department of the Navy. And so, yeah, it was just kind of an idea. Of, like I wanted it to be, I don't, you know, I don't even know like what I was thinking when I came up to it. It just made sense, like the retro game. And then I was trying to think of a group, right? And then I was like, oh, core, because it's like a group of people dedicated to something, you know? And so that's that's what I ended up with. Yeah, and it's very, it feels that way too. This is very consistent. The episodes are very consistent and very neat and have a nice flow. And it's like, I always know that I can expect quality of watching one of those videos. Oh, thanks. Um, so it's like, yeah, I am a fan. It's funny because you do actual deep dives, not to throw like Retro Dodo under the bus or anyone like that, but yeah. they sort of gloss over some stuff. And it's like, no, I want to know, I want to have like somebody's deep dive experience. Like, and that's, yeah, I love it. And I never thought that that's what I was going to be doing when I started this stuff, you know, but I, like, right. it's just what I go get into, right? Um, so anytime I take on a project, I just go in head first. Like, I'm just completely fearless about it. And this is just like this yep. perfect time in my life, you know. 41 years old, I've been there and done that so many things, traveled the world, you know, 15 deployments, all these kind of things, right? And I'm bringing all those experiences into this one random retro game channel, right? <laughs> you know, I, I ran a food blog for 10 years, I did a video game blog before that. And all those experiences are kind of like feeding into this. And I don't know, I love it. Like, I love doing these deep dives now. It's not something that like, I ever expected a year from or a year ago, you know, but it's, yeah, loving it. So. Well, your your passion and quality definitely shine through. Like I was talking about earlier, you you getting up close on the screens with a macro lens and showing off contrast differences and stuff like that in the Vita. Like people yeah. talk about it, but nobody shows it like that. You know, right. that, that was such an yeah. interesting thing to actually see in practice. And then when you were talking about the registry hack um, mm-hmm. and upping the contrast levels and things like that via an actual software hack, dude, I'd never even I'd never heard of that before. <laughs> like, what, where'd that come yeah. from? Out of yeah. nowhere. 
<laughs> yeah, it's all good. I saw it somewhere, heard about it. I and then someone in a comment actually said there's a better hack, and so I'm gonna have to fix that and 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 go back in because there's even a better one that actually because the hack that I did only works when you're in that Vita environment, but mm -hmm. you can do a hack that also works in the PSP and PS1 environment too. So I'm oh, gonna do that. Yeah. Snap. Yeah, that sounds that's awesome. rad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I look forward to watching that. I um, do too. You also, you also do music. You and I were talking in uh, DMs the other day. Yeah. So you released an album last year before you started Retro Game Corpse. Yeah. So when I, um, so without getting way into the weeds, but um, so I, I was sent home when at the start of the pandemic, and I actually was home for seven months. I uh, didn't go to work or anything. And in yeah. the Navy and in my line of work too, when you don't, when you're not at work, there is no work to be done. You have to be at work right. to do it. And so. I had seven months of uh, just trying to find things to keep me busy. And so yeah. the first idea I had after making a bunch of sourdough bread was that I was going to, <laughs> and I did, by the way, um, <laughs> was to, uh, yeah, was to to make an album. And I hadn't recorded music in a long time. I'm, I'm originally from the Seattle area. So I grew up in the music scene, nice. going to shows, playing shows, things like that. And um, and I was in a band. The last band I was in was 2008. So it's been a long time, right? Um, and then even solo recordings, I hadn't done any in about 15 years. And so wow. I was like, you know what? This is the time to do it. And I still had all my equipment from back in the day. It was it's just been in storage and moved around as we like moved around in the Navy. Um, yeah. but, you know, we we went in, we put our masks on, and we're and it was like the beginning of the pandemic, so everyone's freaked out. But we were allowed to go <laughs> into our storage unit, right? So we're wearing our masks, we like got gloves on, and we're like hand sanitizing everything as we go through. Grip <laughs> my guitars and then run back home, you know. And so uh, I got all stuff. my guitars, right? I got all my guitars, and then I um, I'm a cheapskate at heart, and so I was like, I'm not going to buy anything. And so I had my son's microphone that he was using for school work, virtual school, and then I was like, okay, I'm going to use one mic. And the guitars I have at home, and then my iPad, and that's all I ended up using. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. So I love doing that stuff, making the most out of very limited resources. And I listened to that album, um, and I love just the, all the the dynamics you came up with. And when I learned about the limitations that you put on yourself, and I was like, "That's creative! Like that's cool." Thanks. Yeah, yeah. I think that that's. Uh, that breeds the creativity, you know, when you limit yourself and you're like, because when the world's your oyster and we, we see it in retro handhelds, right? We, right. we, we can do anything. And so what do we do? We do nothing. We just tinker around and play around and stuff. But if you were only, if we only had one device, you know, and all right. of us were having to use the same device, think of all the innovations we would come up with, but we're kind of spreading ourselves too thin. And so that's what I wanted to try to do is focus on one thing. And that's really cool. And if, if, uh, dear listeners, if you haven't heard Russ's music, uh, hmm. Google, or go to Bandcamp, go to russcrandall.bandcamp.com. Album's called Stark Mor Stark Sudden Morning. And uh, it's really cool. We'll throw it's, a link up in the description, too. We'll throw yeah. a link in the description. Thanks. It's very kind of Death Cab, Elliot Smith, kind of moody, uh, f cool effects, good guitar. I loved, uh, let's see, what's the song that I really liked? Uh, Washing Up. Yeah, that's my favorite. I got to pull myself out out of the the Android space every now and then. Stubbs brings me out of it. I don't ever listen to music anymore, other than driving to and from work. You know, because when I'm home, I'm I'm working on retro game core stuff. You know, it's uh, well, yeah. I think people would be surprised to see how much free time I actually have to work on things. You know, when I go to work, I have no internet access, and so uh, you know, from about six in the morning until around six in the evening, so twelve hours of my waking day, I'm not even checking anything. I don't see anything. And then, you know, dinner's over and then I have about three to four hours each evening and the, during the week to to manage, like working on a new video, answering questions, yeah. all the other kind of things. And so, uh, yeah, I have I don't get to listen to music. I barely watched like Mortal Kombat, like it's the last movie I saw, you know, and before that <laughs> it had been a long time, you know, just, yeah, I don't get the, the time for it anymore. But I, I'm really loving what I'm doing anyway. So. Well, you're on the right podcast for not having enough time for things. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Like every week, we always try to give it our our best, and like, you know, what are all the things we've been doing? We try to list them all off, and we can never come up with very much. And we're like, oh yeah, that's the point of this podcast, actually. So we're succeeding. <laughs> yeah. Why do I failing. feel so busy? But I'm not. But yeah. I'm busy. But I'm yeah. not. <laughs> it's it's so true. And yeah. going going back to your point of you know, what if we only had one device? I wish we only had one android device 
Mm. Because then Thor and I would be able to focus down and just get this <laughs> launcher done. <laughs> and we'll get this. We'll make Android a good experience for people. Because I get it, man. If it's your first Android device, that, it's a doozy. Oh, man. Like, I had a, I had a one up uh, on everyone there because I had the GPD XD for years. Mm. Before the Plus, the original GPD XD. And so, like, so mm. when Retro Pocket 2, the first thing I noticed, I was like, no touchscreen. I'm going to throw this in the trash. This is, <laughs> this is crap. And I forced myself to learn how to use the mouse. And I still don't like it to this day, <laughs> but I love, I love the device anyways. I love to hate it. Yeah. I feel really bad for people that have been on an Apple device, like their whole deal, you know, mm-hmm. iOS and, and Mac uh, just because Android specifically, if you're not using RetroArch alone, it's a pain. All right, right. To understand. Yeah. And then people are like, they're making Pegasus and things like that. Setting up Pegasus. I'm, I can't do it. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> all right. I'm, yeah. I don't want to sound yeah. like a jerk. It's a great project, all that kind of stuff. Add in scraping and then we'll talk, but holy crap, the manual configuration and all that. And thinking about it from the mindset of somebody who's never touched an Android device before. No, nah, bro. No way. Yeah. Too daunting. Yeah. Exactly. You know, I, I've, I yeah. literally have had my Retroid Pocket 2 since basically launch. I still haven't put a front end on it. You know what I mean? I've got <laughs> yeah. three different operating systems <laughs> at this point, right? But yeah, no front ends. So. Not, not to go against our future nefarious plans, but Reset Collection is, yeah, might be what you're looking for for now. Like, it yeah. is such a slick experience. But isn't and... that, a, that's a paid, like a subscription based one? No, that's oh, RetroX. No. Five dollar okay. one one time fee. Oh, that's totally uh, worth it then. Yeah, it's it's beautiful, man. Like it's this isn't shilling, by the way. It's actually the best thing out there, right? <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, I'll check it out. It is, and RetroX is what Thor was talking about, which mm-hmm. has RetroArch built into it, so you don't have to configure any of the emulation settings. Uh, you just you do have to pay every year like twelve bucks. Yeah. Oh, that's not bad either. <laughs> it has cloud saves, mm-hmm. um, and you never scrape anything. It just automatically says, "Oh, you have this game." It checks the MD5 hash and right. here's the picture for the game. Oh, that's that's brilliant. Yeah. So there's my elevator pitch for both of those front ends. Yeah. But there's okay. just there's just a really big gap between uh the current open source offerings and the paid offerings. Yes. Right. There's a big old gap there. Yeah. So so what we're trying to do is make an open source version of something that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're going to do it. I'm looking forward to it. It'll be awesome. I Anybody out us. there Anybody out there who wants to hop in this project? We still need a couple <laughs> Android developers. Yeah, uh, we have all the enthusiasm and project management skills ready to rock. We just need to find a couple of people with time to make Android be awesome. All that back end stuff, all of the the setup and all, all the scraping, all that stuff's really easy to set up. Integrating it into a front end, integrating it into a launcher is uh, is our next step. That's where mm-hmm. that's where we're at on that. So. And then it being themable, so it can be pretty, mm-hmm. yeah. so we can have that the the carousel, you know, and all that all that good stuff that people love. That's right. It doesn't the have to be. Station. Yep. Can't hate on That's it. About it. Yep. That's about <laughs> well, it. Well, I heard you hating on it in the last episode, but I won't get into that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just hating on Linux in general right now because the, the Android emulator performance. Thor is a bone to pick. Yeah. He does not. He doesn't want to touch it. He doesn't want to hear about it. <laughs> it's pretty good thor like even today i'm like i was playing 351 elec again i'm like i don't know if it gets much better than this like this is amazing but i'm like i wish it was on android i'm gonna keep saying that well yeah. i'm i'm slow to change when you started telling me you were you were buying Ambernick devices i was the one that was calling you a traitor in dms so. you were yeah you were like why would you do this to us why <laughs> we run the retroid server what's wrong with you and i was like what if we just become retro handhelds in general <laughs> yeah. What? That took me a while. That took me like four months to shift mentally. You know? Yeah. Why do we have to limit ourselves to one device? Let's we don't. Other things. Yeah. We don't. It's 2021. Yeah. <laughs> I still love. I still love my RG 350 M. Oh, that really? is still an amazing device. Yeah. I like the form factor on it. I know that it's a little bit weaker processor, but. It still feels good. Like, yeah, you know, the, the thing is, and I, I've been meaning for months now, and I just never get to it, is the I want to build an interface you know, using the simple menu app, you know, where you can kind of basically yeah. build a very light version of emulation station. 
But now that RetroArch's running on the the beta of OpenDingux, you could basically have a front end that would run RetroArch in the back back end for everything up until S- Super Nintendo at least. And so yeah. on an RG350 and a 280V, any of those, right? Uh, I just need to build it. And it, the, all the tools are there. I just, no one's put it together yet. And so yeah. I want to do that and put it, make a video about it. And I can't wait to put that on my 350. Again, thank you everybody for joining us today on Retro Handhelds BRB Gaming. You're here with Thor. Stubborn Pixel. And this is Russ from Retro Game Core. Make sure to check out our description for uh, links to Russ's awesome album and to his YouTube page. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Okay.